Yeah, I was a studio director uh, on Compass and used to put it together on a weekly basis, which didn't involve a great deal on my part. But the success of it was due to the fact you had um, uh, Alan Morris, ex-BBC, ABC, uh, who was um, basically the producer, I suppose, um, and uh, Alan Martin, his his colleague. They both worked together at the ABC. Compass was what it, what its name suggested. It was meant to sort of, you know, gather in from the four corners stories from stories told by New Zealanders, and uh, it's a great concept. And it worked very well. It worked extremely well because in those days the people who commented on television programs in the paper, people like Barry Shaw in the Auckland Star and Christine Cole in the Dominion as it was then, these people were top ranked journalists and and I mean they could see that the big gap in New Zealand television was programs that told New Zealanders about themselves. Um, and we have fewer and fewer of those, which is a great regret. We've got more and more television uh, but fewer and fewer uh, that actually um, we, we, can, we can identify with as New Zealanders. It's, it's an odd thing. But you had to improvise, you had to um, be quick to adapt uh, to the circumstances. Most of all, you had to be able to operate with shoestring budgets. The country calendar budget that I, I got allowed us uh, one film in set uh, this was for the pilot series, one film in set for the uh, initial uh, 13 programs, I think it was. Well then, um, uh, our first uh, program was um, directed by an Italian, Romano Pianti. And Romano came in and said, well, I'm not going to do, um, now he did know what he was doing, by the way, I'm not going to do uh, a... Um, a television program about farming in the, in the in the studio. Farming is about being out on the land. So he went out and he made he made the first in the series, uh, and um, he shot the entire budget on that first program. <laughs> New Zealanders took to it straight away because they could see how important the land was to our economy and to our way of life, and. Um, so from the very beginning, not just when the latest producer took over 30 years ago and when Frank Tawley began, not just then, but 20 years before that, uh, it was a great success from the get-go. Nigel Bingham, who was the moderator, was a great gift to us. He came from the BBC and he was great. Um, the, the difficulty for us was actually to get journalists who had proper journalistic cred, because in those days um, the newspapers didn't like television at all. They were its competitor, and um, so they did everything possible to discourage us. But we were lucky to score a couple of people. One was, um, uh, became a mainstay really, was the political editor of the Dominion at that time. I regret to say his name escapes me now, but um, he, he was a no-holds-barred guy, and we, we could let him loose on anybody. Um, and, and we did manage to, to get a few people, you know, the editor of the Hawke's Bay Herald Tribune, you know, get, getting a bit on the fringes there, but he was willing. And so we always, almost invariably had to fill in with um, a, political, a political commentator of some sort, usually from the universities. Um, you know, they could talk and they could ask questions. And... You know, um, I can remember Alan Martin, uh, Martin's advice to me when we, when we started the program. He said, always remember in an interrogation program like that, that the most important word in a uh, journalist's uh, vocabulary on television is but. You know, in other words, you've got to challenge. And people weren't used to that. But they loved it. I remember when we interviewed Holyoke that um, he sweated like a pig. And um, so we had to figure out what to do because every five seconds he had his handkerchief out and was mopping himself. <laughs> the sweat was pouring off him under the big arc lights that we used to use in those days. We had to scour the place for a fan, but something that worked silently, which actually wasn't very easy to do in those days, 
And he still had to, I've got to say, get out and, uh, his hanky and mop the upper lip occasionally. But his um, television, well, his television interview in that series was um, a mark of the way that he faded as a politician. He could not communicate through the tube. I mean, you know, he just was not a natural. And uh, all, all the Prime Ministers that we've had since have been television naturals. They have to be. But he wasn't. He, ca he was a very warm man. He was a very funny man. He was very personable and amusing. Um, he had a real intellect. Um, but he came across as pompous and as, as slightly full of himself. We got the best people. We got Ian Johnston. And uh, he was the front man. And um, the idea was that nothing was going to be less than three or four, sorry, more than three or four minutes, so that you kept the audience's attention. And um, it had to be light. Uh, so, you know, it was the for the first time, uh, uh, television reporters in New Zealand, who were straight out of the newsroom, uh, had to learn not only to look at ease on television, they also had to be able to be funny. The, the thing just clicked because it was regional television. It was about our region. It was about us here in Wellington. And it clicked in all the four centres. And where's re uh, regional television today, I, I have to say? I mean, you know, I mean, we've had politicians, you know, give out the odd promise. But the fact of the matter is that five days a week, it does cost something. And um, so we no longer have regional television. I mean, I think it's a disgrace. Dialogue really came out of a wish to see the church uh, challenged and able, willing and able to defend itself um, in the light of, um, you know, increasing secularism. You know, Alan Morris was particularly um, cynical about our chances of bringing off something successful. And I racked my brains and I said, what we'll do is we'll make it a current affairs program. And that's what we did. We had an invited audience of skeptics. We had a panel of clergy. And they went at it for about an hour. And uh, then we edited the result 20 minutes. And it was great television. It was extremely uh, popular and um, widely viewed. So, I mean, we, we, we could have run it forever, but uh, I went on to other things, and so the program wound up. We succeeded in pulling the plug. The screens were blank for 24 hours. And um, do you know what happened? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing happened. People just got on with their lives. Uh, nobody was bothered. Nobody missed any, anything. They just went on with the programs that they had been expecting to have. And um, everybody in broadcasting was deeply disappointed because they be sincerely believed that they had at hand something that would be at least as serious as pulling the plug on the electricity supply, for example, which it wasn't. Um, it was a hard lesson to learn, but they've never had a stoppage since. Not I'm, I'm talking about a major national stoppage. Um, and that's why it was, a, it was a complete and utter failure. What we've got now is we've got um, a peculiar situation where TV3 is barely making money and has had to be subsidised by the government. So that's a bit of a turnaround if you like. Um, uh, Sky is successful, um, and, uh, but that's by dint of subscriber television, which wasn't even thought of back then. Um, so we ha certainly have some uh, private uh, participation in television, um, but the state-owned entity has completely lost its way and no longer has any... Um, concept of uh, being there in order to A, set standards and B, um, bring us programs that uh, enlighten and educate as well as entertain. Um, they, they, they seem to have forgotten that concept altogether, which is a great shame. But New Zealanders are showing that they, they know how to deal with these sorts of situations because everybody is now turning to other forms of um, video entertainment. You know, you can get it on the internet. And, um, you know, it's there when you want it. So um, it's a pity, but the idea of a state-owned broadcaster which sets standards and um, informs and educates people is an idea that uh, in television has never, 
never really reached um, a stage of maturity.